You got to know what you're good at. What is your niche? And is your best use of time the things you can offload or delegate and really maximize the use of your God-given talent? All right. And we are at the Leverage Podcast here and by hosted by Virtue Desk, episode 82. And we have our guest, Mike Hagee, who is with Compass and broker in charge of Pride More Properties and principal partner at Compass Real Estate. Mike, how are you doing? Doing great. Glad to be here today. Glad to have you. I know you're also uh, one of Virtue Desk clients and you're using virtual assistants. So thank you for your loyalty. And um, Mike, uh, just give you our audience a little bit of introduction about yourself. Could you tell us who you are, where you are, and how long you've been in the business, what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in uh, real estate 18 years, um, oh, wow. a father of four, and uh, you know, ultimately live in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. We have a team of 35 producing agents, and we have eight administrative assistants that work on our team. Nice, nice. So you 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 got quite a team, right? So um, at home and in uh, business. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, in your experience as a leader, what do you think defines a great real estate team? Uh, is it the, the, the number of units sold, the number of uh, the GCI, or what is it? I think it's how many uh, positive memories you can create in the people that matter most in your life. So, I think uh, I that. that's probably you know, certainly GCI. There's metrics you can look at, but uh, uh, we're a collective team, not a leads team. So most of the agents on our team have 10 plus years experience. They work mostly by sphere, repeat and referral business and client parties. So most of the work we do is very centered around how we provide value to the people that matter most in our life. I love that. I love that. So, I mean, I love the referral part of it uh, where people actually don't, you know, I mean, especially right now, uh, people don't like to work with strangers. So you basically, you know, uh, build a referral business. That's amazing, man. And I knew in, in your experience, what are the top three, five roles that you need when you hire? Uh, let's say when you first hire for your real estate team, let's say somebody as a top producing agent, they want to build a team, they want to grow, they talk to their coach. So judging from your experience, what would be the top first three hires? Let's say three, five hires. Yeah, I remember 18 years ago, the idea of hiring a personal assistant was so foreign to me, Pavel, because in my mind, it was this idea that I'm writing a check and I'm used to doing everything myself. There's a lot of agents yeah. that find themselves in that place. And at some point you realize you don't go to Starbucks to have coffee. Yeah. You don't, you go for an overpriced latte, maybe a thick cup and maybe some cool music, right? Some ambiance, but you got to know what you're good at. What is your niche? And is your best use of time writing paperwork, you know, mm -hmm. uh, distributing on social, doing marketing, you know, or are there things you can offload or delegate with, you know, a strategy um, and really maximize the use of your, your God-given talent. So in my opinion, the very first hire in building a team is looking at what is the definition of your team and what does that look like for you? And maybe that looks like you hired Virtue Desk, which is fantastic, by the way. This is just my like, mini plug here, by the way. We have been so pleased with the services that you guys provide. We love our VA. Uh, it's been a great synergistic partnership. And uh, we've been on fire with uh, the idea of hiring you guys and just working together. So it could be hiring a VA. It could be hiring an EA, which is what I have both. Um, mm -hmm. It could be, uh, you know, another buyer's agent to help you offload some of the deals that you can't handle. So I think you had to start with like, what does that look like? I'm not sure when we started this journey, we set out to have 35 people. It started because we wanted to take good care of people that we love in our lives. And then that led to repeat and referral opportunities so much so that we couldn't handle all the business. And so at Got some it. point, we needed people to strategically partner with. Maybe they're on the geographical side of town that we didn't work, or maybe yeah, it was an exactly. area we could offload. So uh, that's how it started for us. I love it. I love it, man. So, I mean, for me personally, I mean, when I, uh, and, you know, before I do the virtual desk, I actually practiced real estate. And uh, when hiring anyone, I was first like writing out a detailed, detailed job description as far as, okay, here are the tasks that need to be done. And let me put it on the other side of the paper of tasks that can be done by somebody else. So based on the tasks that can be done by somebody else, based off, off of that, I could write up a job description as far as what exactly I was looking for. So so that kind of like my way of doing it, it's not really sophisticated, but okay, here's things I can do by myself. Here's things I can, somebody else can do it for me. So what's your, what's your uh, strategy when you write out a job description, who are you looking for usually? That's question. Uh, I think for us right at the moment, 
you know, we're looking at it as we, an ops manager helps us keep like ourselves, you know, on track for all the things. So having clarity of what the vision mm-hmm. is, that's probably the most important thing. I mean, currently we're expanding into two different new markets. So we have two expansion team members on our team. They're in, uh, in two hours away from us. So managing that from afar and helping them develop systems and processes and leaning into what we've already created. So writing out a job description, for example, might look like our marketing assistant saying, let me take out all the pain points of creating social media templates. Let me kind of take out all the pain points of distributing those assets. And Hello, you kind of broke now. Yeah, yeah, we, did. Lose him? yeah. we I I lost him. him. I think we lost him. Uh oh. Oh, you you back? Okay, you back. Good, good, good. Yep. You got yeah, like, back. It's back. Yeah. Take two. Take two. Yeah. <laughs> take two. Sorry, guys. Might have to edit that. Um, Don't worry. Yeah, there we go. The power's back on now. Okay. <laughs> okay. You got a hurricane coming? Yeah, the hurricane is. Uh, we're in Charlotte, but the winds are starting to land here. Carrying so from apparently- Florida, so we might as well just. You know, get quickly and you know wrap it up. You know, so yeah, <laughs> case, <laughs> make sure right? we get it all in. Yeah, totally. I mean, let's try it, Leah. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's good, man. You know, yeah. Okay, so um, let me ask you another question, Mike, uh, about the personality types, because you know, like when you hire people for your team, uh, you want to make sure that the personality of these people fits your personality or fits your culture. How do you define what personality you're looking for, and how do you? Uh, pick from those people that you need to be need to have on your team, and that referring to both assistants and buyers agents, listing agents, what what not, you know. Totally, those are great questions. I think for our team, it, there's an avatar agent that we generally look for. It's someone we found that really appreciates what we have. Mm-hmm. Is they know what they don't like from where they came from. So in other words, they're looking for something different. They're looking for mentorship, coaching. They're looking for collaboration. They're looking for a true family feel environment. Um, And so, you know, they're asking questions like, so how can you help me achieve the goals that I have for the future? And what type of training do you have? And what is your accessibility from? Yeah, he's breaking off again. Yep, he broke off too in my end. Me? No, no, Uh, you're all good. Uh, just oh, with Mike's phone. Yeah. Yeah. I'll we'll just wait until he pops up, you know, again. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if not, we might as well just reschedule that, you know, for different yeah. days. We can reschedule on 17 onwards. Yeah. Hey, Mike, you're back. You're back. Oh, we can't hear you. Can you try talking? Yeah, test, test, one, two, yes. three. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, we can hear you, yeah. Okay. I don't know, I, you know what it is? If I was on the Wi-Fi calling, the storm, apparently I'd look at the winds and then uh, clip the power and the power came back on and reconnected to the Wi-Fi calling. So I'm back for the foreseeable okay, future. Okay, good. All right. Well, good Good to know. So so ba- back to hiring based on personality types. Uh, and yep. We're talking about uh, what you, when you hire somebody based on personality and what kind of personality you're looking for to fit your culture, to fit your team. Yeah, totally. So for a team member, it's someone that's growth minded, that's coachable. And mm-hmm. ultimately, you know, they're probably been in business for at least two years or so, and they know what they don't like, and they don't know how to grow from where they're at. So that's really a good, we've been really successful at taking that type of agent and helping them double or triple their business. Uh, so personality wise, someone that is personable, someone that's coachable, someone that's willing to learn. Um, mm-hmm. and again, we're a collaborative team, not a leads team. So it's not this expectation of showing up nine to five every day. It's more about how do we do the activities that are going to be bear the most fruit. Um, so that's what we look for in terms of a team member, in terms of assistance, it really depends on the job role. Um, mm-hmm. so, you know, the job role might look like if it's a very detailed position, for example, our ops manager was a licensed agent for 17 years. So she knew the business, but she doesn't want to sell. Um, And she loves being around like the back end of the support of the business. And she's fantastic. The the, our agents love her. We love her. So I think, you know, and she really takes ownership and pride in her work. So it's hard to tell on the front end just based on personality type alone. There's so many other things you have to kind of walk through, but 
someone that is experienced that help can you know clear carry out your vision. I think that's where it starts. And for us, we have a multi-system interview um, where they've got to talk with us, my business partner Scott. They talk to our broker in charge, and they run through Lori, our ops manager, uh, to make sure it's a good you know good culture fit, which is so important to us. Awesome. I love that. I love that. So, um, I mean, sounds like you're actually running your business like a real business uh, because for a lot of real estate agents, it's just a, a you know, either a side hu hustle or uh winging it, you know, kind of a thing, but you sounds like you have structures. You probably have a SOPs in place and job descriptions for only uh, key people and mm -hmm. your virtual assistant, when she works for you, she probably knows exactly what expected of, of this person. Right. And oh, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. So, what kind of accountability you guys do with 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 the VA? Yeah. So How for us, work? we hired um, we hired our, our first VA based on a uh, we're looking for a video editor, and specifically mm -hmm. felt like if she has those skills, then all the other marketing would happen because to be a video editor, you have to be very detailed and understand different platforms and distribution oh, yeah. and what have you. And so we hired her based on that, and then slowly it's turned into literally everything and anything marketing related um, is set up. It's for about a month, month and a half out. Um, when we do a video shoot, we will do 30 to 40 reels on a day, for example, we'll schedule those out and then distribute on all the different platforms. So, you know, her day to day uh, starts with a beginning email of what she's going to be doing that day and mm -hmm. end of the day recap, which never fails. It's always start and finish. Um, I've logged on to the system twice in the beginning that I love your system. It'll take a clip of her screenshot oh, of what the, she's uh, working time, and, timely yeah yeah it's timely but after two times yeah. of logging on i don't need to log on anymore because i know the work's yeah. getting done and that's uh good. you know yeah. that's just we have trust factor she's been fantastic awesome awesome so um i usually ask this questions from a lot of people i talk to on this podcast and we all know that we're in a very different market than we were let's say uh six months ago seven months ago <laughs> less uh even you know not even talking about a year ago so what would be your advice to real estate agents who got licensed within the last two years and their first uh, experience with real estate was actually red hot selling market where you just put it in MLS and sells with 30 offers and uh, your only uh, job was to, uh, the most difficult was to pick which offer to take. So now it's shifted. So what would be your advice to those guys who got into their business, uh, let's say within the last year or two? Yeah, that's a great question. I think if you got in the last two years or so and you don't have a mentor or a coach, now is the time more than ever to get out of, out of, side of your mind and recruit the folks that um, you know that can help you along that way. And that might look like uh, a Tom Ferry coach. That's who we uh, mm -hmm. partner with. Have we love our coach? But mm -hmm. you know, you need somebody outside of your own mind, and whether that's joining a real estate team. Um, and if you are cooking a ton of business and you've had this great opportunity, now's your opportunity to really hone the skills that will help you for the long term. And that might look like making your phone calls, doing the daily activities, writing down a checklist of what you're going to do. Basically today. going to the basics. Going to the basics. Win the day by yeah. noon. Wake up early. Don't sleep in. You know, don't, don't think it's just going to keep coming. You've got to be proactive. And now more than ever, your people that you sold a house to in the very beginning, the first six months, they want to hear from you now because they may be thinking, did I make a mistake? Did I pay too much? What's happening in the market? Getting back to those basics, those beautiful basics, that will carry you forward in the next like 24 months. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, you know, a lot of people just, you know, what, what I observed, like uh, agents, again, they they keep doing the same things that they were doing like a year ago or two years ago, which is nothing. You just basically, you know, put the sign in the yard and boom, it's gone. So now it's time to step up. It's time to actually, you know, get them with some video, get some uh, more marketing activity, actual, you know, boots on the ground, kind of a door knocking, prospecting, whatever, you know, throw out events for the, for the, for the uh, potential clients, um, ask for referrals. So basically all of that, because business doesn't come to as easy as it used to. Uh, what do you think about the housing market overall? Where it's, where it's heading? Where, I mean, I know we, we don't have, we don't have the crystal ball, you know, but we can, we can just chit chat about that. What, what are your, what are your thoughts about it? Con considering right now the interest rate are about 7%. They are there, yeah. As of today, and the, the time of this recording, seven, seven and a quarter. I mean, we can all acknowledge that it's going to cost more 
than it did three okay. months ago. Um, I think more than now than ever, what we have to remember as real estate agents is really take the position of a financial advisor who helps people in the stock market. We mm-hmm. should be also a real estate advisor and helping people with their greatest asset of their life, which is, you know, typically real estate. Um, yeah. And, you know, right now the, the real estate market, I'm very bullish on the real estate market because I'm looking at the history. I'm looking at over time, it's going to go back up, even if it goes back down. I think there's going to be a lot of headwinds and, you know, the, the headlines that may say, oh my gosh, year to year, the, the value crashed. Dropped. Yeah. Uh, market crash 10%. Yeah. But people fail to remember the past five years that they bought a house at that time period, maybe it went up 30. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so it doesn't in. really matter if it crashed 20. No. You know? Yeah, it's the average. So it's like that's the way I, I look at things. Yeah. You know? Totally. And, and the way I, the, yeah, the way I look at things, uh, I don't lose because I didn't sell. I mean, that's I don't exactly. sell at a loss. So there's no loss because if you sell, you only lose if you sell. Because right now you just hold, you, you know, you can rent out, you can, you know. Uh, but again, people need to live. People need places to live somewhere. So I always keep that in mind, regardless of the market. I mean, when I first bought my house, I think the interest rate was about close to 7%. So that was uh, almost 20 years ago. So it's, it's back. Doable. It's back. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's yeah. like, you know, the, the idea of marrying the house and dating the rate, you know, I've heard that said. And, I heard it, But yeah. it's true from the standpoint of like long-term inflationary concerns and caution. The only way that that can be slowed down in general yeah. is interest. That's, that's, you know, people are tapping the brakes of that. So at least from that standpoint, there's, a, there's on one side of the camp that feels like interest rates are going to continue to go up, but they're going to drop back down to like the 4% range early next year. And there's other people I've heard that'll say it's just going to continue to rise. And at least from that standpoint, I'd rather have equity than I'm worried about a little bit more in interest that I have to pay for the long term. So exactly. I think that, that that's, you're going to pay rent and you're going to pay somebody's rent. It might as well you're gonna be pay yours. somebody's mortgage. You're going to pay somebody's mortgage pay somebody's anyway. Mortgage. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's a good mindset. And it gets uh, the good uh, way of looking at things and uh, consumers right now, I think they were panicking at first, but I think it's going to subside right now because, you know, people get used to bad news, you know, and you learn to live with it. True. So, <laughs> you know? True. It's about 90 days, take a deep breath and then you get, you keep on, keep on chopping wood. Exactly. Exactly. Well, uh, Mike, that was a very nice talking to you. We're just going to wrap it up. I know you got a, you know, some wind coming your way there, so uh, we don't want to get breaking down. And you guys stay safe. And um, thank, you. thank you for coming on this podcast. I really appreciate it. Um, and again, this is Leverage Podcast, episode eighty-two. We had Mike Hagee from North Carolina and Pride More Properties and Principal Partner at Compass.